Hi everyone, so my name is Imogen Crow and I am a progressive, intersectional, demigender queer, radical feminist who fights for the rights of women of all sexes. I have a Bachelor of Gender Studies in Queer Theory from the University of Sydney and I am currently doing my Masters in Feminist Dance Philosophy, both of which have prepared me so well for fighting and dismantling the oppressive, white supremacist patriarchy that I am forced to live in and I have something to say. Right now, progressives like myself should be absolutely thrilled. We finally managed to break through the fascist dictatorship imposed by Donald Trump by destroying the oppressive capitalist concept of private property, tearing down oppressive racist statues to erase racist history, and forcing anyone who disagrees with us to either shut up or take a knee. Yep, if you look at the past few weeks, we progressives have achieved everything that we truly desire violence, anarchy, and torching other people's buildings. And sure, while some people might see violence and anarchy and destruction of private property as bad things, sorry, but in the face of a literal white supremacist living in the White House who is personally responsible for all the racism that all black people have ever faced even though he's only been president for three years, violence and anarchy are just necessary for self-defense, even if nobody has actually physically attacked you. And if we look to the great and glorious Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone slash organized protest, aka Chaz, we can see exactly what the future holds if progressives are in charge. I saw an experiment in anarchy and chaos, and in the absence of, of, of any authority, those who naturally rose to the top were those who were able to do it through brute force. So as been reported in the past two weeks, there were marauding militias essentially and um, gangs of people who were armed with semi-automatic rifles mm -hmm. going around patrolling in a way that was very intimidating and monitoring those who came in and out through their sophisticated communication systems which involved walkie-talkies and I think uh, what was most disturbing to me and which hasn't been discussed much is some of the literature that they gave out which included instructions on how to encrypt your communications so that security apparatus can't monitor you and instructions on how to make bombs and how to kill law enforcement using homemade weapons it's written everywhere in the graffiti and they have tables handing out all this literature so this is just some of it that i was physically handed when I was there undercover. Also, don't believe all the reports about how there apparently have been three shootings and at least one attempted sexual assault in Chaz. It's clearly just the white supremacist media trying to oppress us and our movement. Even though medical services were called and people taken to the hospital and one guy was arrested, there's absolutely no evidence anywhere to suggest that there is any kind of brutality going on. It's totally peaceful. Practically like a festival. They even have movie nights. Now, unfortunately, I actually can't leave Australia at the moment because our Prime Minister, who is also a white supremacist and an evil Christian zealot, Scott Morrison, has said overseas travel is banned because of the coronavirus. And while there are some exemptions, there's really no point in me applying for them because even if I fit the category, the massive amount of unconscious bias in our society would absolutely mean that I wouldn't be allowed to travel because I'm a woman. But if I could leave Australia, I would absolutely go straight to Chaz, as would like every other progressive that I know, and enjoy the socialist utopia that Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez always promised us. I want you to find by the end of, by the time you leave this autonomous zone, I want you to give $10 to one African-American person from this autonomous zone. And if you find that's difficult, if you find it's hard for you to give $10 to people of color, to black people especially, you have to think really critically about in the future, are you going to actually give up power and land and capital when you have it? If, you're, if you have a hard time giving up $10, you got to think about, are you really down with this struggle? Are you really down with the movement? Because if that is a challenge for you, then I'm unsure if you're in the right place. So find an African-American person, the white people, I see you. I see every single one of you. And I remember your faces.
You find that African American person and you give them ten dollars. How long's the uh, blackout going for? Well, eight p.m. Okay, so I have to wait till eight, basically. Uh, what? you're welcome to like hang out in the perimeter area. Well, the thing is, I'm I'm half Italian, half Colombian, so do I get a pass to get in there or? Well, this space is right now held for just black folks. Oh, just black. Okay, yeah. so full black. You're saying? Um, if you have black ancestry or if you um if you have experienced oppression because you are black then you can enter this space okay thank you yeah. But in the meantime, there is plenty that I can do right here to make a difference. See, as a 22-year-old white person living in 2020, I am personally responsible for the oppression of all indigenous people by every single white settler who invaded Australia over 200 years ago, even though my ancestors were Irish convicts who were sent to Tasmania by the English for stealing bread when they were 16 years old. But I'm sure that even though they were being whipped to shreds by overseers at Port Arthur Prison and forced to break rocks in the blistering heat and the freezing in cold, they would have said at least one mean thing about indigenous people on their lunch breaks and were therefore white supremacist oppressors as well who deserve to be remembered with hatred and shame. Side note, I am slightly less responsible for the past oppressive actions of all white people ever since it was only ever white men who did bad things and I'm a white woman, but since I still share their skin colour I'm still like 75% responsible. I think. Anyway, on the subject of white people taking personal responsibility for the actions of people who lived hundreds of years ago, it's great to see that so many white people physically are apologizing for racism, even if they don't know that what they did was racist. I mean, whiteness is a disease, seriously, and sometimes that disease is asymptomatic, which means whiteness itself can make you racist even if you don't know that you're being racist. Seriously, every action a white person does, every little thing that they say, they need to scrutinize in order to squeeze all the racism out and therefore stop oppressing people of color. And if you can't see any racism in anything you've done, even if it's just the way you say thank you to your immigrant Uber Deluxe driver, well, that just proves that you're not looking hard enough and that you're even more racist. So keep looking because trust me, it's there and you need to take responsibility for it. Fortunately, there are some role models for white responsibility out there, and how funny that they all seem to be celebrities. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment. I mean, it's no wonder, I suppose. Hollywood is just so inherently woke, and the people just seem so grounded, like, really in tune with real world issues like gender fluidity and toxic masculinity. I bet Hollywood just generally attracts good and decent people who put principles above publicity and mean absolutely everything they say. Like Aaron Paul in that immortal video about taking responsibility. We can turn the tide. It is time to take responsibility. Call out hate, step up and take action. I mean, you'd never know that he spent six seasons in a movie happily starring in a hit TV series that relentlessly displayed Mexicans as violent criminals whose sole purpose for being was working for the drug cartel when he actually had such strong anti-racist views. <laughs> Just amazing, right? Then, of course, there's this wonderful trend that's even more literal. White people are literally apologizing to black people for centuries of racism, even though they weren't actually there to perpetuate the racism, nor were the black people there to experience it. Humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. You brought the thunder and rain today, God. Because Satan takes the hell today. Father, in Jesus' name, you get the victory. Father, we ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters for years and years of racism, of systematic racism. And don't you just love the fact that at least some Christians are realizing how inherently evil and oppressive their religion is, despite all those global charities that they pertain to have founded, and are apologizing for it by subverting it by using Jesus' act of washing the feet of his disciples to wash the feet of black people. <laughs> 
And Lord, we repent, Lord, on behalf of all of our people, Lord, as, a, as an English person, God, here in America, Lord, I repent on behalf of the colonialism, Lord, and, and the oppression that came, God, I repent. And Lord, I ask for your forgiveness, God, for causing us, for putting in our hearts such hatred that we would perpetrate slavery. And Lord, we stand here. It's my honor to wash my brother's feet, God. It's my honor to go in humility and say, please forgive me. Please forgive us. I mean, it makes perfect sense because, like, Jesus was black. But of course, regardless of these shining examples of white people taking responsibility for their own entrenched racism, however invisible, there is still a whole world of systemic racism out there which results in the traumatic oppression of BIPOC people and POCs and WOCs everywhere. Like this horrendous example of blatant racism from actor and filmmaker Eliza Scanlon. Eliza is apparently like the next big thing or something. Like she was in the remake of Little Women with that massively privileged white feminist Emma Watson and she also just won the Sydney Film Festival for best director of her short film Mukbang, which apparently is massively hard to win and can be a de career defining moment for a lot of people and she's only 21 so apparently that makes it even more impressive. But none of that matters because her film contained content that maybe possibly could perhaps be objective to some people of color. You see, mukbang is a Korean eating craze, and the film is about a girl who gets caught up in it, like a kind of coming of age story, which would be fine if the girl in the film wasn't white. Yep. Eliza Scanlon made the horribly racist mistake of being interested in something that is outside of her culture and skin color. And anyone who knows even like a tiny bit about cultural appropriation will know what a conduit for white supremacy this kind of thing is. Thankfully, another young Australian screenwriter, Michelle Law, a woman of Chinese descent, called her out on it, and since she's a woman of colour, I mean, that alone is enough to make her more than qualified on the topic, even though China and Korea are different countries. But hey, there are some racist people out there who mistake one for the other. That wouldn't even cross my mind, of course. Anyway. I have seen Mukbang. Beyond being profoundly problematic in the way it appropriates Korean culture in order for a white girl to find herself, it is the equivalent of eat, pray, love for teenagers, it contains the following scene. Again, content warning. The antagonist in the film is a black teenage boy. <laughs> now I'm not going to show you the image because Daisy Cousins, you know, the literal fascist who usually runs this YouTube channel told me that the bosses of YouTube might ban this video if that kind of image is used in it, and since I need to get my message out, I unfortunately have to do what she says. However, I can say that it was an image of a white girl with her hands around the neck of a black boy, which is, of course, perpetuating white supremacy. Now, if I were a white person who lets their inherent racism go unchecked, like Daisy Cousins does, I would say that contextually the image probably makes sense because the black boy is the antagonist of the film, apparently. But since I am a white woman who is constantly checking her privilege, as I should, I can absolutely say that in the face of something maybe possibly being potentially racist, context simply does not matter. The mere concept of context is racist because it implies that race should not be the first and foremost defining factor in how people are perceived and treated by society. And trust me, there's nothing racist about putting race first. Speaking of film and TV, and on a slightly happier note, there are a few streaming services who have revealed that they are in on the fight to end racism. Netflix, Stan, BBC iView, and a few others have taken the step of removing shows from their platforms that contain material that all people of colour would definitely perceive as outdated cultural stereotypes and would therefore definitely be traumatised by. And yes, I absolutely can make an accurate assumption that literally all POCs feel like that because I am on Twitter and literally all the POCs I interact with on Twitter say the exact same things. And since Twitter is absolutely an accurate reflection of public opinion and also since I make sure I block everyone who disagrees with me because as if I need to be exposed to wrong and potentially triggering opinions, it definitely means that all POCs think the same. And for all you white people watching who want to improve yourselves, I can assure you that that kind of thinking from a white person is the opposite of racism. Seriously, you should all be taking notes. See, it's my willingness to protect BIPOC people and other people of colour from hypothetically possibly being maybe made to feel slightly uncomfortable that makes me such a hard-working anti-racist. I mean, 
Nothing says anti-racism like limiting the access of black people to particular films and television shows that might possibly cause them offence. It's our job as white people to protect them because in today's systemically white supremacist world, they can't protect themselves. Seriously, anybody who doesn't care about race as much as I do, who doesn't see race everywhere and base all their interactions with people on whatever race that person is, is disgustingly racist. I mean, whoever said that quote about how we should judge people by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin must have been a massive white supremacist. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream to be. So, in conclusion, and in the immortal words of feminist role model Clementine Ford, Grow the f*** up, you f***ing loser. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Thank <laughs> you.